price this year was a bit naff, wasn't it? Aside from the fact that two of the games I was most excited for turned out to be huge disappointments, there just really wasn't much going on in terms of the kind of games that I look out for or enjoy. There have been plenty of little one to two hour indie gems, although nothing that I'd say is really worthy of a Game of the Year award, and there have been a few entries into the typical blockbuster giants that have been equal parts broken and blasted by now. But the kind of things that I personally love to see in games, my staple horror franchises, dark and miserable stories, all the grimdark storytelling an early 2000s teenager can muster, has all just fallen by the wayside a little. Last year was full of it, we had the grimmest of darks with The Last of Us 2, Cyberpunk suddenly existed and Resident Evil 3 upset me, instead this year I've upset everyone else by loudly proclaiming my hatred for We Happy Few, which has invited some interesting discourse. But anyway, let's get into what made this year tick, and instead of whatever it was I've been doing for the last few years, I'm just going to pick out a few of the games that I loved this year, and then let you know what I think was the best experience of 2021. Despite the few misgivings I had with elements of its plot and its combat, particularly with regards to the final boss, Tormented Souls honestly surprised me with how damn good it was. Slick, as polished as its relatively low budget could manage and clearly made with love and reverence for the games it's inspired by, Tormented Souls is the proverbial love letter to survival horror of the 90s and early 2000s. There have been a few attempts to capture this feeling over the last few years, but none have done it quite so successfully as this game. From its atmosphere to its soundtrack, its deliberate clunkiness, its level and map design, and just the overall look and feel of the hospital and what lies beyond, this is a serious triumph that the developers should be proud of. Pick it up if you've not yet had the chance to play it, the Steam sale has literally just started. Technically a DLC, and actually the last expansion released for the seminal hit remake of the Flash game original by Edmund McMillan, Repentance might as well be listed as the complete overhaul of Rebirth that it really honestly is, from huge improvements to gameplay balancing, the addition of a large number of items, equal parts as useful as some are useless, the addition of an enormous amount of room layouts, bosses, music and much much more, Repentance brings back a huge burst of life to Rebirth that was sorely needed after the slightly more lukewarm reaction to the changes made by Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus. Modelled after the Anti-Birth mod that was released back in 2016, Repentance brings the majority of the items, characters, bosses and more that the mod created, and confirms them within Isaac Law. At the same time, the subtle and not-so-subtle tweaks made to the game have massively increased the difficulty to the point that playing Repentance versus playing a version updated only to Afterbirth or Afterbirth Plus is a very different experience, not least in the visual overhaul given to Repentance. The game looks, plays, and feels as outstanding as it always did, and though not all of the changes were particularly loved, one thing is for sure. I can actually pretend that I enjoy playing as the Keeper now. Released barely two months ago, Forewarned appears on the surface to be nothing more than a Phasmophobia clone amongst a slew of other clones. However, after hearing a few whispers that it was actually pretty good, my friends and I gave it a shot and damn if it doesn't stand on its own two feet, far better than many of the other four-player survival co-op games released in the last year. Taking on the lessons already learned by Phasmophobia for the most part, Forewarned is a co-op game in which you are an intrepid adventurer, journeying into the depths of Egyptian tombs to recover ancient artefacts and identify the beastly mummy or monstrosity that protects them. Unlike in Phasmo, dying in Forewarned doesn't completely prevent you from being of use. You can amble around as a mummy yourself, choosing to help or hinder your team as they desperately scramble to find the last pile of coins that they need to tick all the boxes. Or if you're feeling particularly fancy, you can dance the Macarena for them. I don't want to get into too much, but despite being so young, the game has had a huge number of updates and several new beasties to bother in their natural habitat. Confirming, at least for now, the developers' commitment to not letting themselves fall into the Phasmo clone trap. Time will tell how well Forewarned fares after the incredible success of Phasmophobia, but I truly hope that it keeps up its momentum and continues to introduce bigger and better maps, creatures and opportunities in future releases. Hades. 
I finally played it! Yes, that charming and gorgeous roguelike that everyone and their grandmother has been banging on about for the past few years was released on PS5 in 2021 and I finally bothered to pick it up and give it a shot and, uh, yeah, it's alright, isn't it? In all seriousness, Hades is the absolute epitome of everything that Supergiant have been working towards since Bastion's release. Fine-tuning their craft to the peak of perfection, Hades is slick, fast and brutal. It has excellent music, a truly fascinating story, stunning art design and that beloved tough but rewarding gameplay that affords you a true sense of pride and accomplishment when you finally surmount the wall you've been headbussing for hours. There's little I can say about Hades that hasn't already been said, but at least I can now throw my hat in the ring and say that yeah, it's pretty good. And for the non-Game of the Year submissions, that's pretty much it. I'm looking at the list of releases from this year and realising just how few of the big games I actually missed this year as I've spent most of it playing games that I either didn't pick up or didn't bother with from the last couple of years like Jedi Fallen Order or just playing a bunch of multiplayer games with my pals. As I mentioned earlier, I was disappointed with both Deathloop and Resident Evil Village, the latter of which I reviewed and the former of which I'll just point to Skillup's review as to why I didn't like it. There's also been Valheim, which this year has been so long that I genuinely didn't even realise until one of my friends pointed it out to me that Valheim was actually released this year. I've put 120 hours into that game and some of my friends have put double and more of that into it, so it's pretty good, but I wouldn't say that it's something that I'd consider a game of the year. Definitely worth picking up though, and it's very likely that it's on sale right now on Steam if you're interested. But for the most part, I've been spending the last 12 months splitting my time between older games and sodding simulators. You can blame Nehru for the 100 hours I've poured into Gleaner Heights. Go give Nehru some love, his links are in the description. But thankfully there is one game released back in April of this year that I can point to as being the absolute standout in its field and a definite must-buy for anyone who has managed to scrounge up a PS5. It's so damn difficult to talk about everything that makes Returnal the stunning, visually arresting and haunting experience that it is without spoiling the entire thing, so I'll try to restrain myself. But in simple terms, Returnal is a roguelike in which you play Celine, voiced by the fabulous Jane Perry, in what is honestly her best role to date. And being given the opportunity to star in a leading role has allowed her to craft of Celine an incredibly fascinating, thought-provoking and multifaceted character trapped in an endless cycle of what appears on the surface to be little more than alien torment and catastrophe. But look beneath the surface of the bullet hell third person shooter and you'll find far more depth than you might have thought possible. From the repeating motifs of the classic Blue Oyster Cult song that serves as far more than just a simple reference, to the beautifully realised fourth wall breaks, the strange and ethereal settings and so much more besides, Returnal is a game that demands patience and skill and upon learning and mastering it you will feel that patented pride and accomplishment we've all been craving. Returnal is a game where there is plenty to see and plenty to discover as long as you're willing to sink beneath the waves. It is colossal in its scope and drive, made with an enormous amount of love for the genre, and it is dripping with an intensity and earnestness that I immediately connected with. The way Returnal weaves its music around its surroundings, crawls into your mind with its architecture, ever-shifting level design, curious eldritch whispers within the shadows and the increasing confusion and paranoia of its protagonist, is frankly unmatched in anything I've played recently. Months after achieving the true ending, I'm still struck by the visual design and the soundtrack, and I still get chills thinking about that Hyperion fight. If you were put off by the fact that you couldn't suspend a run and return later, this has now been patched, meaning you don't need to set aside several hours of your day on the off chance that the game updates and closes when you put your console into rest mode. And with this much needed addition, I can say with all honesty that Returnal is a must-have. It deserved far more than the praise it received, and it is absolutely more deserving of it than Deathloop. And I hope that we can return to this world, or to Celine's world, in the future, whether that be with DLC or a sequel of some kind. Until then, I'll be working on a bigger project ready for the new year, and hopefully this time, the wrath of the internet will be in my favour. Thank you very much for all the support recently, guys. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Likely Happy Chinese New Year by the time I get the new video out. <laughs>